Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at AP Chemistry Unit 9, Section 9, which is all about galvanic cells that are operating at non-standard conditions. Now, you might remember in the last several videos, we've been calculating the E-cell, the potential difference, or the voltage, of different galvanic cells. And in pretty much every case, we've made the assumption that we're at standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius, one mole per liter in the case of solutions, and if there are any gases, that would be one atmosphere. Well, that's a big assumption, because as you probably know, in the real world, we're not always working under those ideal laboratory conditions. So let's imagine we have this equation here, and this represents a galvanic cell. What's going to happen as the galvanic cell reaction progresses? Well, let's imagine that we start at standard conditions, what is the initial concentration and temperature of all solutions when the galvanic cell begins to run? Well, like I said, it's at standard conditions, so it would be 25 degrees Celsius, and concentration would be one mole per liter. Now, what's going to happen to the concentration of copper ions and aluminum ions as the reaction continues to run? Well, let's think about this. Copper two ions would be a reactant. And I think it makes sense that a reactant is going to be depleted as the reaction continues. So we would say that the copper ion concentration should go down as the reaction goes on. And aluminum ions are a product in this reaction. So it would stand to reason that as the reaction continues, you would expect the aluminum ion concentration to increase since it's a product. And that's exactly what happens. Your reactants are going to decrease. Your aluminum ions are going to increase. Now, what happens to the potential difference of the cell as the reaction continues to run? Well, if you think about electricity as a product, you know that as the reaction continues, the voltage is going to go down, isn't it? So the potential difference is going to decrease. Eventually, you're going to get less and less and less electricity as the reaction goes on. I think that makes sense because if you have a, a cell phone, for example, you charge it up in the morning and it has a 100% battery level, if, as you use that cell phone, it, it, its, its percentage value goes down. It goes down to 90%, 80%, 70%, the potential difference you would expect to go down. Now, if your cell phone just somehow magically went up, you know, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100% on its own, you'd think something was up, right? That's not what you expect. Your voltage goes down as you run the battery. Now, what happens to the galvanic cell when it attains equilibrium? Well, this is when the battery is dead. And so at that, at that point, the voltage of your galvanic cell equals zero volts. So if you have a battery at equilibrium, it's dead. Don't buy those batteries if they are at equilibrium because, well, they're dead. They have a voltage of zero. Now, let's take a look at this example. This looks like pretty much the same equation. The galvanic cell, represented by the equation below, begins at standard conditions. Calculate the concentration of copper 2 plus ions when aluminum ion concentration has increased to 1.50 moles per liter. Now, for something like this, I would strongly recommend that you use an ice box. I think this helps us to keep our, our concentration straight pretty well. I know it's been a few lessons since we've used an ice box. This represents initial concentration, change in concentration, and equilibrium concentration. Now, since we're starting at standard conditions, our solutions are both going to be one mole per liter. So I'm going to fill those in. Notice that the solids are basically irrelevant because they don't really have a concentration because they're, they're solids, or at least they're not going to be relevant in the reaction. So it says that the aluminum has increased to 1.50 molar. So down here at equilibrium, or, or end, I should say, it's not really equilibrium, it's going to be 1.50 molar. So can we calculate the change between initial and end? Well, it's a gain of point. 50 molar, isn't it? 
So if this side is gaining 0.5, well, this side has to go down, doesn't it? And by how much? Well, it's a 3 to 2 ratio. So it's going to go down by 3 halves as much as this went up. So that's 0.75, isn't it? So that means this side is going to go down by 0.75. That means our ending concentration is going to be 0.25 moles per liter. And that's the answer. It's 0.25 molar. And you can answer questions like this, not just for, um, for galvanic cells, but pretty much for any reaction that involves stoichiometry and change in concentrations of solutions. That works out pretty well to use an icebox. Now, we've talked about non-standard uh, conditions. We're going to take a look at another equation here that actually would help us to calculate the voltage at something or at, at conditions that are not standard. Here E, that's just the, the voltage or the cell potential at whatever conditions that you're talking about. E with that a degree sign represents the voltage that you calculate at standard conditions. Those are like the voltages that we calculated in these last couple of videos. And then we have this other term, RT over NF times natural log of Q. Now Q is the reaction quotient. That is the, the products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients at some non-equilibrium value. Now, there are a couple things that we can point out about this equation. First of all, it would be very unusual for the College Board to ask you to actually use the Nernst equation to solve for something in here. This is not something that they generally have students do on the AP exam. It is rather time consuming and uh, the benefit is, is, is not that great. So they're probably not going to have you just, uh, just plug and chug in this equation. One thing that they will have you do though is think about how these variables can be uh, manipulated. Now notice that a couple of things in this equation really cannot be changed. R and F are constants. R is that universal gas constant of 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. That's never going to change. And F is Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. That's never going to change either. And to be honest, if you're looking at a specific chemical reaction, the number of electrons will not change either. That's pretty much fixed based upon the equation. So R, N, and F aren't going to change. Now T could change, couldn't it? So temperature could go up. Well, notice that if we think about T, if the temperature goes up, that's going to cause this entire term to go up in value. And since that's a subtracted term, that means that your voltage or your potential difference is going to go down. So essentially what we're saying here is if you raise the temperature of a galvanic cell, its voltage goes down. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I remember years ago, my grandparents would put batteries into the refrigerator because they said it made them last longer. Now, maybe it has something to do with this. Uh, did my grandparents know about the Nernst equation? Probably not, but maybe they were told at some point that, you know, lowering the temperature of your batteries, putting them in the fridge will help them to last longer. You know, maybe that's what they were thinking about. Likewise, if you lower the temperature, you know, your, your E is going to increase. Now, most of the time, we're not really changing the temperature. What we're changing would be the, the, the concentrations of the substances, those values that go into Q. Now, let's think about Q. If you increase the concentration of the products, well, products are written on the numerator of Q. Right? So that's going to make Q increase, and that means this whole term increases, and your voltage or your cell potential is going to go down. So increasing the products causes the voltage to go down. Now what else is going to do that? Well, not just increasing products, but decreasing reactants. And so notice, decreasing reactants, increasing products have the same net effect on your voltage. It causes that cell potential to go down. Now let's think about the other way around. What, what happens if we increase the reactants? 
Well, reactants are written in the denominator of Q, aren't they? So if we increase the denominator of Q, that's going to cause the value of Q to go down. It's going to cause Q to decrease. And that's going to cause this entire term to decrease, which means your voltage or your cell potential is going to go up. So think about that. Increasing reactants, what else would have that effect? Well, decreasing the products. So if you increase the reactants or you decrease the product concentration, it's going to cause your voltage or your cell potential to go up. So you don't really have to know how to plug and chug into this equation, although it would be nice, I suppose. The fact is, know how these different manipulations of temperature and reactants and products will change the value of E. Now, let's apply this. Let's go back to that same reaction that we looked at earlier. And let's answer this question. How is the potential difference of the cell affected when the concentration of the copper ion is increased? Well, let's think about that. We know that increasing the, the copper ion concentration, well, that's written in the denominator of Q, isn't it? So that's going to cause that Q to decrease, and that's going to cause the E cell to increase. So we can think about it that way. Let's go the other direction. How is the potential difference of the cell affected when the concentration of aluminum is increased? Well, aluminum is a product. Products are written in the numerator of Q, aren't they? So if they're written in the numerator, that means that this change is going to cause the value of Q to go up, and that's a subtracted term, so it's going to cause E cell to go down. So E cell is going to decrease. State two ways to increase the potential difference of this galvanic cell. Well, we've already talked about one. We can increase the concentration of copper ions. What's the other one? We can decrease the concentration of the aluminum ions. That has the same net effect on your E cell. Now once again, the AP exam is going to give you the Nernst equation. So you can look at that and, and see how changing those, those, those values would uh, manipulate the value of your cell potential. So don't feel like you have to go out and memorize the Nernst equation. You certainly don't have to do that. I hope you've learned something from this video about non-standard conditions and galvanic cells. If you have, go ahead and consider uh, hitting that like button. I would really appreciate it. That does help the algorithm. And in the next video, we're going to talk about electrolysis in the very last section of the AP Chemistry curriculum. We are in the home stretch. Hope to see you then.